logarithmic graphs are very, very closely related to exponential graphs. All right. When we were doing logs, we looked at that formula that transposes a log function into an exponential function. So a equals b to the c is the same as log b equals a to the c, whatever it was. All right. So that, that formula. And so these two graphs are actually inverses too. And remember when we talked about the square root graph, I talked about the inverse being the um, reflection in that line. This is the same. So if we looked at our straightforward exponential graph, it looks like this. Through 1, up to k, and beyond. All right? So there's this dotted line that goes through here, and the reflection of that is our standard log graph. So where is it going to go through the graph? If I'm reflecting it in this dotted line that's here, the point that's going to be interesting is this one. It's going to go to here. All right? And then all these points here are going to go down here, and it's going to go up like this. So it will look like where this is k. All right, so k was here, one out, one out, now this is k. All right, so this is our straightforward log graph. y equals log base k of x. Just like every other graph, though, we can move this one around. So our general form formula for this graph will be y equals log base k x minus a plus b. All right. Again, just as with the exponential graph, we're moving the axes. This graph has an asymptote. That asymptote at the moment is the y-axis, all right? It will not cross the y-axis. You can't log a negative x. You cannot find the log of anything that is negative, all right? So therefore, whenever, if you were ever asked to do that, it would come up with an error. So you can't find the log of a negative. Therefore, then when we draw this graph and move it, we've got log 2 x plus 1. We'll relax that plus b at the moment. All right, so we're trying to move that graph. We're moving the whole axis to where? What's happening to the axis? Very good. They're moving one that way. Right? A equals negative 1. So the whole graph is just being pushed that way. So we're going to have our asymptote at negative 1. That point where it must cross is one square out. So now we're going to go through here. All right. Then we're going to go one square up and k out. So k is 2. We're going to 2 and it'll be 1 up. All right, so we'll get that. All the same things apply to these graphs. So therefore, if k was a half, it would come this way. All right, because it has now gone, so the same as with the exponential. If they were negatives, hmm, we get negative values. We're going to just deal with positive log graphs for now. So it may have a fractional value here. It may not. Remember, a fractional value can be more than one. So if you've got three over two here, it's still going to look this way because it's one and a half. It's not between zero and one. All right. So if we're having to find the equation, we need to be able to find K.
So if we've got a graph, at negative three and our one away value, one away from that is way up here at three and it goes through negative one. All right, that's quite hard to determine that that's a log graph. And quite often log graphs, exponential graphs, square root graphs, you might be able to interchange them. There are quite a few of them that look very, very similar and close enough, all right? And when you're modeling, close enough is, is okay. If you're modeling a function, then it only has to approximately map it, okay? So, but in this particular case, what we've got is A equal to what? Negative three, B is? where the one is, where it's one square away from the dotted line. So three, all right? And K we don't know, but we do know this point, zero, negative one. So we've got Y equals log K X minus three plus plus three. All right, so we can put this value here in, Negative one equals log k zero plus three plus three. Take the three. Put that three in the front. It is. So we've got three. No, don't put that three in the front. Don't be stupid. Negative four equals log k of three. What are we going to do next? Why are we doing this after we learned algebra? Because we have that equation that we can use to rewrite this. So we know that k to the power of negative four equals three. All right, k to the negative four, what does that mean? one over k cubed equals three. Right? Remember, ne oh, four. Remember the negative means one over. So now if we multiply, we get three k to the power of four equals one. So k to the power of four equals one third. And what's the fourth root of a third? I have no idea. But I'm just going to leave it like that, because that's exact. So I now go way back up here and put that really horrible thing in. Y equals log fourth root of a third x plus three plus three. Would you get something that revolting? Probably not. But why not have a revolting one? It's not hard, just a case of a bit of algebra in here. It's quite likely at this point here you would have had something that said, k squared equals 9. So you would have been able to find k equals 3. All right. Can it be a negative? Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. No. Yes. Can logs have negative no. bases? No. no. Okay, good. Features. What do we got? Asymptote, good. This time it will be a x equals asymptote. Anything else? Not really, unfortunately. Okay, 